I just needed to test it out and it looks so funny. It looks like I'm trying to cosplay a frog right now. <laughs> like those are his eyeballs. Hey there, Justine Snakes in a Head McClowski. Do you have snakes on your head? No, of course not. And that's what I'm here to fix. When you need snakes in your head, there's only one place to go. That's right, Justine Snakes on a Head McClowski's. Where the snakes go on your head. And remember we are always saying, if it's not snakes, do not put them on your head. Now that we've cleared that up, I'm gonna show you how we get all these snakes on my head. Like many popular characters, Medusa has always had a specific look. I wanted to try something a bit different and sought inspiration from a few different places. I studied the crafting of foam wigs worn by drag queens, and the crown came in as an afterthought once I saw the Medusa pin by Lively Ghosts, the sponsor of this video. Instead of giving her long, free-flowing danger noodles, we went full magical girl. And what do we need to make this way too elaborate of a headpiece that I have no idea where I'm going to be putting when I'm done with it? Because <laughs> I don't have room for any of this stuff. What have we got for supplies? all of the snakes from Walmart, or more specifically, the Walmart's kid section. I'm sorry to the children who really needed snakes for whatever reason for your birthday party, I have them all. I have this stuff, which kind of just reminds me of like the Chinese finger traps. Got this stuff from the dollar store. Got this too. Do it yourself wreath rings for the headpiece in the back. And then I got a ton of this rope. I have extra rope in the form of plant hangers, but it comes with these little rings and I thought those would look kind of cool. There's like little hair bits hanging off. I would say basically all the supplies I got for this project I got from the dollar store, which was nice. And to make this video, we're gonna have to do something that I'm sure everybody loves to do. And that show off their hairline. <laughs> you want to get the wig cap on like so, so you can find where your hairline is because it's going to come in very soon here. With our plastic wrap, we're gonna pull out a generous amount. It would probably be easier if you had someone helping you with this, but I don't because my friend who could help me is currently still in school. Because that's what I get for being friends with someone who is in their senior year of high school. <laughs> God, it's already getting bunched up. Damn it. You wanna make sure that it goes past your hairline, so I'm gonna tape it down to my forehead. I never claimed to be a professional. So if you're watching this going, I don't think she knows what she's doing. You're right. Here's the disclaimer now. <laughs> why, why do I look like the girl from Never Ending Story? <laughs> Start twisting. You wanna make sure that you can still see your hairline. I have a mirror next to me that I'm kind of just eyeballing. So I'm gonna tie it to my chin. We're going to get strips that are pretty long. I'm just gonna get, take this one, go over. Got the hole cut in the top of the head. I am now going to go around and because the sawdust is gonna fall through, I'm gonna try to just make sure that it doesn't fall out. So we're gonna do the felt first. I'll probably hand stitch that on as well, but first things first, let's figure out where we want the felt to go and where the darts are going to end up. For the felt cap layer, I began pinning sheets around the foam head, cut around the marked hairline and began creating the darts. I cut away the excess dart material and created a tight stitch along the two sections. I didn't really care how this looked, so I went full Frankenstein on her. Making my newborn monstrosity, I traced down the center from top to bottom and across, creating four separate labeled sections. Once you have traced the four pieces onto foam sheets and cut them out, glue and stitch the matching pieces together. Be sure to remember which is the wrong and right side of your pattern. Let's try her on. Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> oh, hello. Mm. Your breath is stinky. Did you eat a, a leg you found in the woods? It's time to glue these pieces together and cut them up. I have to sweep. Ah. Whatever tools you got to cut foam, 
grab them. There isn't a whole lot to it besides choppity chopping. Okay, so that's the process. Um, I'm gonna do that to the other square. I'm gonna trim this one down a bit more. It's actually like the exact size or a little bit bigger than I want the actual buns to be, which means I have to trim this down quite a bit since it's gonna be layered with rope and everything else. There's some more chops using a blade one of my lovely supporters Matt sent me. I was finally content with the shape of the buns. And with that very smooth transition, I bring you this week's spooky sponsor. Before you say anything, yes, I am advertising spooky goodness in spring. If you're anything like me, you're mourning the loss of October 31st at 11.59 p.m. Lively Ghosts kindly sent me three of their dresses, which I showcase here. We have the Solitary Shadow Dress, a sleeveless sort of priestly dress that is perfect for layering. It has a high neck and waistline. Oh, and pockets! Now the Crimson Nightmare Dress is a linen, long-sleeved version of the Solitary Dress, and of course, has some pockets for you to store all your whimsical trinkets. If you like the Crimson Nightmare Dress but need it in black, Lively Ghosts has got your back with the Ritual Coven Dress. Here we have the star of the show, Medusa herself forever immortalized as a glow-in-the-dark pin. This pin was another big inspiration in the design process. I am so grateful to Lively Ghost for collaborating with me on this week's video. If you would like to indulge in some spooky thrills anytime during the year, head over to LivelyGhost.com, use my affiliate code RED10 to get 10% off your next order. Now we can finally slap down some snaky textures. Even though this is looking more amphibious. <laughs> Ribbit. For the yarn snakes, I taped down some duct tape, sticky side up, and just went with a length I thought would give me the most coverage. I glued the top of the hair and trimmed the bottom. Then snipping smaller strips, I began to create her hairline. I chose to have a few strands hanging here and there since I wanted her hair to feel somewhat organic. They also made for a great beard. The heat gun was super useful for curling sections of the yarn too. Then of course, we have Jeremy, my least favorite son. Look at him, ugh. That took forever. I hate you, Jeremy. <sighs> it's, it's a thing. I made a thing. <laughs> I think I went a little overboard with the tiny snakes. It just looks like hair. So instead of going into the back and, you know, adding even more yarn, I'm just going to start sculpting the snakes. <laughs> he's, he's just a little guy. <laughs> he's just a little guy. <laughs> so far, I'm pretty happy with everything. Uh, today, we're going to be going over areas like this, trying to get him to stand up these. They're a bit sturdier by a bit. I mean, a lot sturdier than the wire that I was using for this area. I tested this out last night and it, it stays up because this is so light, but I will be sculpting a snake head to the end of this. So it's probably going to hang down, which means I'm going to go back over it with this thick. <laughs> it looks insane. So there's that. Looks so dumb. <laughs> I attached the floral wire to the metal rings and sort of weaved the wire in between the pigtails. I then used some fishing string to keep the soon-to-be snaky pigtails aloft. I think I'm gonna have to add like a rod or something coming out that will hold this out to the side because that's what we want. We don't want that. Looking forward to the day when these videos will actually be more of a tutorial than me going, maybe? Do it. I don't know. Oh, it worked. Yeah, maybe someday. Deciding the floral wire wasn't enough, I took the original wire and wound it around the floral wire, then wove it through the pigtail. This time I tied the string to a higher point on the wig, this being the bun snakes. I added more floral wire to the tiny pigtails in the back and heat formed the yarn into curly little dudes. Next up, we began sculpting our boys. I tend to think out loud a lot in this video, so you'll see why I do what I do a few times. The method I seem to prefer was shaping, then gluing the floral wire to the wig base before applying any clay. I think making the little snake heads was one of my favorite parts of this project. 
I just imagined I was sculpting little dragons and it somehow made their anatomy make more sense to me. Then of course we have their tongues. If I sculpted them out of foam clay, I know they would have broken off in five seconds. This wire method worked great and was shiny. We like shiny. After gluing the rest of the floral wire to the wig base and sculpting clay around them, I took the larger mesh tubing and slid it along the little noodle dudes. This method varies later on as well. Don't come for me. Now it was time to add all the extra little Heidi snakes and the large nest of snakes on the back of the head. More baby heads, some twins, and some angie boys. I had so much fun sculpting their freaking heads. <laughs> Look at them! So cute! Who knew the back of a sewing needle would be perfect for sculpting snake mouths? I have no words other than... <laughs> She's looking grand. I think this looks pretty freaking sick. I am really hoping that once she's painted, this does not come across as brains. Cause this looks like brains to me. I'm excited to go in with the acrylics and get to painting all the highlights, but she's pretty. Mm, I love them. She is glorious. I done to thee. Oh, Medusa. <laughs> Good morning. We now have the dried Medusa. I added a couple other little things here and there. I had, I had to cut the heads off the snakes before I actually put the mesh on. So uh, one's really messy because I didn't do that at first and the others are smooth. And I keep hitting the paint can. Let's do it. She's looking pretty cool. <laughs> oh, that's sick. It looks so cool. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna store this. I have no idea. I'm probably gonna end up crying because something will break. In the meantime, while that's drying, we're gonna work on the crown. I almost forgot about that. I don't even remember if I went over it when I was discussing materials. My bad. Snick, snick. <laughs> this one in particular. <laughs> go, go somewhere, Truffle Shuffle. Boop. I need socks. So I am, I am cold. My toes are yellow, there's no blood. And before you sit there and talk shit and say that I shouldn't be showing my feet, this is for all the people that you guys are warning me about. <laughs> it kind of just fits against the snakes on the back. So I'm wondering if I can figure out a way to make it just attach and I'm gonna cut off the rest of these pieces but keep this part right here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That's the bottom, everything else can get cut off. Got it, let's get her out of here. This smells so bad, I wanna throw up. Oh, and a quick shout out to the lovely, lovely human who bought me a freaking log mug from my wish list. That looks like the top of a log. And look at the, the saucer. I'm gonna die. I love it so much. How is there parts of the snake in it? Let's see if I can break the center. What about you guys? Can you do it? Oh! Yeah! Wire strippers for the win! <laughs> so I'm gonna go put it against her now to see where I want the bones to start protruding. I'm gonna mark that off with some tape and then we're gonna get to sculpting the bones. Pay no attention to the dirt behind the curtain. 
Oh, more burn. Bone structure materials, wire, aluminum foil, hot glue, and foam clay. I started off by wrapping wire around the areas I wanted to place the bones, wrapped that in tin foil, and glued it with hot glue. My super professional crown mount. Oh, you can see my little buddy I've been saving for months crawling around. That's Kyle, Kyle the spider. I probably should have done more to secure the bones to the base. They ended up spinning a lot and the tips of the foam clay snapped off on a few pieces. The mailman is here right now. And I'm really hoping he doesn't need me to sign for anything. Oh, oh, just, oh, oh, oh. What follows is a brief montage. Do you need someone to sign? Don't mind my headdress. <laughs> I'm a costume designer. I know it's f***ing weird looking. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, shush. <laughs> and just scribble with your fingernail. It never okay. comes out good. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I love that I actually recorded that. He didn't look me directly in the eye. <laughs> right side. Okay. Yeah, so if I can secure it there, that would be pretty sick. Like, if I can get, like, something rigid that can go straight across and connect to the hoops here, it'll just hold them. Otherwise, I'll just do everything like this. <laughs> That's rad! I'm thinking I will figure out how to get this to stay on the wig afterwards. I'm probably gonna find something that is straight, maybe clear if possible. That way it'll do this. It'll kind of push it because once it's on the wig, it'll kind of set like this. To give you a better idea of what my brain be thinking. Red equals sturdy metal arm and fishing string. Blue equals metal hoops on the sides of the buns. It'd be painting time. I ended up going with a mix of coral snake pattern and pretty much whatever orange noodle popped up on Google. Don't mind the rattlesnake looking guys. I know what I did. Aging the bones was super friggin' easy. I just added a light brown acrylic wash with a hint of gold throughout, and boom, old ass bones from my many victims. Poking some wire through the felt slash foam base, I twisted it around the bottom, securing the crown to the wig. Painted the entire lower half of the crown black, and of course, because my bird brain needs shiny, added some pearls and diamonds throughout the wig to give it a little extra something something. And with that, we are ready for the reveal!
Oh, I'm so happy with this. For about 70% of the project, I thought that this was gonna be a disaster. <laughs> but it wasn't, only a little bit. Door frames and walls are a no-go and branches <laughs> with this. You forget how big you are when you walk around with it, but she's done, look at her. <laughs> I'm so happy with this project. Ever since I was a very small bean, I've had this weird obsession with Medusa. I mean, I had pet snakes, but I think it's more of like the silhouette. I think it might even just be how similar she is to mermaids in full Gorgon mode. That makes me go, <laughs> mummy. <laughs> the main issue is now just figuring out where the heck I'm gonna store her. Because instead of, you know, not making big projects like I want to over and over again, and just making small projects that are easily storable, I'm doing this <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> I can't help it. Look at her, she's so cool. Look at her. <laughs> Main issue with this project was just how snappable foam clay can be. So there are definitely pieces that have already come off and cracked, like with the bones, because it just keeps hitting stuff. The snakes are good. Snakes haven't broken off on anything. They're, they're pretty sturdy. But hey, I learned how to make a foam wig. That's pretty cool. Uh, I kind of figured out the beginnings of making a wig in general, like with hair. So that's also cool. Maybe I'll do something like that in the future, even though sewing that much hair to things sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. And I can't emphasize enough how much I appreciate Kaya for letting me use her song. Uh, please go check out her Spotify and her Instagram, you guys. Her music is wonderful. Uh, her single Hellfire is gonna be coming out tonight. So you know what I'm gonna be jamming out to before bed. And last but not least, Lively ghosts. The fact that they're spooky all year long warms my, my odd little heart. <laughs> if you guys want to get your Halloween on now, head over to livelyghost.com and use my affiliate code RED10 to get 10% off your next order. And do let me know if you guys like the lookbook kind of advertisements I've been doing, or if you prefer like the more informational based ones where I just tell you about the website and all that. I kind of like the lookbooks. I think it's really fun, especially when they look more like short films. I think that's cool. And I really want to make more like that. If anything, I could even just make those into YouTube videos and just do like lookbook of the week. That way I can put out some more content too. It's just a thought. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If anyone makes their own Gorgon wig, please tag me in it. I want to see what you make, even if it's just like a little, oh, if someone makes baby Gorgon, I didn't realize I needed that until now. So please, please, please do that. Okay, cool. I hope you guys have a very spooky spring. I'll see you in the next video. Ah, I'm trying to get them out faster. I'm so sorry it's taking so long. I don't think it'll fall off. It's okay, pretty. I'll try. Turn my <laughs> <stone>. I, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>